Hello, hello again my friends and welcome back to the channel. This is Legendary Tabletop and today we are going to do something a little bit different and we are going to talk a little bit, dive a little bit deep into the lore and talk about a Tau. And we're going to try to not say Tau too many times but if you're at home Take a drink every time we say Tau. And there's your first one. Now this faction is the newest faction to the Warhammer 40k universe. And it's much different than many of the other dark, grimdark themed, uh, chaos themed, uh, genocidal space elves and that sort of thing that Warhammer 40k is known for and the tower a bit different they are essentially a group of races much like the Halo's uh, Covenant a bunch of alien races working together towards a common goal which they call the greater good and many people on the internet and the reddit uh, comment sections like to compare the Tao to uh, communists where they essentially are I guess a technocracy there are a small group of AI assisted uh, beings that are their leaders and so today we are gonna build a proxy army and I'm looking here on the one page rules portion of my mini factory and I found these these jackal characters here and I love these models they're really cool really alien really different and I think that these would be a really great uh, proxy for the crew um, that the Tau often go into battle with and then one page rules has also made this eternal dynasty is is what they call it for their game um, but essentially it can be a proxy and can be put in to stand in for Warhammer 40k or whatever you know game that you decide that you're gonna play and uh, these models are really cool they have a sort of Asian theme to them and to not always print 3d print everything I found these neat little dollar store final faction figures here I'm showing you right here having a little trouble with the mouse ooh, ooh, come back here and this is this little robot guy and it was been sitting on my shelf for years and years and I decided to add it to this army and we're gonna go for a sort of green blue yellow type theme here for the army and uh, you can see here this is my test model where I've basically uh, come up with a scheme for these jackal slash crew proxy slash alien slash whatever story you want to make up uh, for your head lord that's going to make your uh, game a little bit more enjoyable but I think it's always good here just to take note to before you paint your army just to do one or two little guys up in some different schemes so you can actually see uh, what it's going to look like um, so we have some contrast paints we're going to start with here. Uh, this sand golem and this uh, funky yellow here. We're going to do uh, purple for the uh, beasts here. And I actually had started painting this guy beforehand in a, a green and blue. And I decided that I just didn't really like the way that that looked. So... The great thing about these contrast paints is you can let your mistake dry and then you can basically reprime it in white and then just go back with a new speed paint here and you basically get the same effect um, depending upon the opacity of your white paint that you're using. Uh, maybe you need to put like two or three coats on there but uh, for the time being it's just like an easy way to go back and fix your mistakes as well um, if you are getting a little too a wild and sloppy with the contrast slash speed paint you can let it dry 
and apply the white paint back and, and fix your mistakes. So here, our Zealot Yellow and our Sand Golem is going to be the base for kind of like all the armor on our army here. So we're going to paint the armor of the Jackal Boys and then once we get to our robots in the army here, our uh, Tau suits, I think they're called, uh, what are they called again? I can't think of it. Uh, crisis suits, yes, crisis suits. And those are going to be yellow, a little bit of, uh, you know, an homage to uh, Bumblebee, you might say. So, but I'm using these two uh, contrast paints, the Sand Golem and the Zealot Yellow, to create um, a sort of gradient to begin with. So, like the bottom of the armor here, you can see a little bit more clear on these little robot boys here from One Page Rules. Basically, I paint the bottom half to a third with the Sand Golem, and I blend it in with the Zealot Yellow in the middle, and then I use the zealot yellow on the top and just a cool little trick here is I found some poker chips online for pretty cheap I think maybe fourteen fifteen dollars for about a hundred poker chips and they make a great uh, base for uh, Age of Sigmar uh, you game pieces they make uh, really good uh, bases for 40k the the Ten, you know the games, maybe uh, Conquest, uh, Last Argument, and Kings too, because they sort of had a, a, a little bit of a larger uh, miniature scale here. So those poker chips are like really cool kind of uh, bases, and they have a little bit of weight to them too, so which is nice, which will uh, stop those little Cheeto fingers from knocking over uh, those boys on the tabletop. And we just uh, primed the little tank boy. And we uh, Zenithal highlighted as you as you saw before, and then now we're going in with a grim black contrast paint. Then we're going to use that for all the weaponry on the Beast Boy here. Whatever kind of beast this is, it kind of has a like a, uh, a sort of Star Wars creature vibe to it. Uh, a sort of uh, it. This looks like it was uh, designed by. Uh, industrial light and magic um, which is I think quite, quite a compliment to uh, the one page rules uh, designers for coming up with some uh, cool units and miniatures for us to uh, 3d print and one page rules also has their own uh, lore for this which um, you, you can get with the free rule books that you can download I'm going to put a link to all that stuff below as well as a link to all of uh, the models here that we're using um, and then those robot uh, toys that I that I showed you a little bit earlier in the video that we're going to see uh, in a few uh, in about a minute here on the video those are only available really in the United States uh, at the Dollar Tree which is where uh, I'm located, but I, you could probably get them on eBay if you're, uh, or there might be something, you know, similar for you if you're in Europe or Australia, um, or ca Canada. Um, so now we have hit the weapons with the black contrast paint. We are just using a little white to highlight the eyes and some of the points on the weaponry in, uh, in some of the robot units to create a poor man's object source lighting at some point um, in the future here. Um, but now we're just gonna take some of this uh, blue and paint some of the cloth on uh, those Crute Jackal boys here. And uh, you can see that dollar store guy that we've primed and painted. There's also a couple uh, Tau proxy units that I've grabbed off Thingiverse, it's like that little missile guy there, and we've basically given everybody that that same scheme with the Zealot yellow on the top and the uh, Sand Golem on the bottom, with which with hardened leather is probably one of my favorite uh, speed paints. So now I'm taking one of my new favorite paints, this green fluorescent from Vallejo. And I'm going to basically water it down a little bit to create a glaze. 
and I'm gonna put the glaze a little bit generously over the eyeballs and the little points on the weaponry that I've highlighted white to make my little glow here and I'm gonna do this maybe two three times depending upon how strong it comes out and uh, now I'm just gonna take some of this army painter zealot yellow and I'm gonna do the dry palette here I'm gonna wipe a lot of the paint away I'm gonna dry brush some of the edges here to create a nice highlight on the yellow and also to kind of get rid of that speed paint look which is it is what it is but I think just a little dry brushing over it kind of takes it to the next level next I'm gonna take this Vallejo metallic silver I'm gonna gonna dry brush very lightly basically the tops of the portions of the mechs and the robots that I had painted with the black speed paint and we get a really great effect here and you could do this really without the speed paint just with a, a nice coat of black and a little dry brush of, of any sort of metallic anytime you do metallics on your miniature you should do a black base coat and it just uh, looks pretty darn good I'd say I like the way that looks and now we're taking this Savallejo uh, light purple here um, and we're going to dry brush our beasts here with our little uh, Jacko boys riding dirty on top there and just a very light dry brush to bring out the highlights and to make that speed paint look a little bit classier and now we're gonna put a little tacky glue and some aquarium rocks on our uh, poker chip bases here for our robot boys and we're gonna let that uh, dry we're, and then we're gonna also fill in the gaps with a little bit of black sand and uh, this army is really coming together here and I like the way that this yellow looks and the speed paint combined with the very light dry brush just makes for kind of an easy way to uh, get that yellow yellow is notorious for being difficult to paint um, now we're gonna go with a color wheel uh, choice here we're gonna do a nice light blue on the bases and then here I have a, another fun item from the Dollar Tree this is a uh, basically a disposable champagne flute and uh, this is a trick from uh, Wylock, old school Wylock uh, there is a video where he teaches you how to build some hover uh, space marine bikes and he uses these um, and I think they look great on normal miniatures and they're really inexpensive we're gonna use that for our hover tank and I think that looks uh, real nice. And then last but not least, we are going to tuft it up and call it a day. And thank you everybody for coming to watch this video. We're going to roll that beautiful bean footage.